Okay, we're back and back in black and ready to go. Start up again. Welcome back to Spiritual Judo and the Green Life for Jesus, uh, for the interfaith Jesus, for the pluralistic Jesus. Um, and so, the, uh, we finished off um, at the first introductory portion here, um, talking about the, my, with my response to uh, Caitlin, what was her name? Caitlin Curtis's um, article at uh, Sojourner Magazine, sojo.net, um, complaining about the Super Bowl winner uh, team, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, and and the uh, significance of that in terms of the other professional sports teams with native themes for their um, uh, brand names and uh, team um, uh, and teams that uh, then have become part of their team culture. So. Um, we moved down through the various issues to look at um, already how uh, Ms. Curtis's concerns really plumb to uh, a traumatized uh, depth and a traumatized uh, angle, taking a traumatized angle of the, the issues of genocide and enslavement that, that reflect, that correspond to her own a feeling of frustration and impotence of screaming into a void that, that the American mainstream simply doesn't respond. And um, so for, for me and our perspective here, um, the Christian perspective, a, a uh, holistic uh, activist Christian perspective, uh, evaluating the, um, the issues, evaluating the audience, evaluating our target audience, uh, in solidarity with these concerns of Ms. Curtis and the Native American people, I want to broaden the discussion and identify some of the, uh, the, the psychological, the psychosocial and cultural forces and dynamics that we are entering into um, that, that correspond to the resistance um, and the reluctance and the absence, the denial and the denial of a response. Um, the psychological denial ultimately being one of the basic issues involved. Um, people don't want to acknowledge. Who wants to acknowledge enslavement and genocide? I want to cheer for my team. I want to, I'm here, I'm an American in my own uh, identity and uh, position and living my life uh, with various assumptions. And so um, how are we as activists um, and, and concerned about building um, uh, an effective uh, cultural position, psychosocial and cultural position. What, how are we going to understand this? So, we just looked at um, this quote from Jesus. Um, Jesus being a, a, a fundamental uh, resource, a fundamental basis for Western civilization that is widely fragmented, widely itself denied and distorted. Um, that's the kind of um, angle that I want us to look at uh, in this episode. And so I was just talking about uh, Jesus' discretion in his comment about giving Caesar what is Caesar's and God what is God's. Uh, there is also in, and that's in Mark, and then in Luke, Jesus says, well, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, but you are not to be like that. So, um, Jesus then, in, this, in, that, uh, in that second uh, uh, incidence, is already demonstrating um, a clear discernment of uh, the problem of oppressive leadership and the, um, well, his encouragement then um, and instructions to take a different approach. And so, what are our options? Well, um, so we have protests. Protests are um, an important option. They, they do serve an important function to communicate a certain, uh, and offer an opportunity to communicate for people already, a simple, straightforward way 
for people to do that. So, um, uh, and my little boy, Kevin is just opening the studio door here. Um, and so, uh, I'm going to throw in the question, you know, throw out the question um, for consideration. Can cultural forms of oppression be overcome in ways in addition to protests? And what more is there to a vision of a uh, successful, sustainable, alternative, progressive lifestyle, um, pluralistic, uh, and, uh, and, and transformative and prosperous? So, um, I mean, one, one element that uh, uh, to enter into quickly by way of introduction, Jesus was raised by a carpenter. Uh, Gandhi... Uh, as a recent uh, high integrity spiritual activist, was a lawyer who dedicated himself, he trans transformed himself and became a man spinning his own cloth and making his own clothing to some degree, um, to some high degree. Um, we also have in the 1970s, economist E.F. Schumacher's 1970s book, uh, Small is Beautiful, which elevated uh, this kind of value of localized self-reliance with social critic Christopher Lash, I recently uh, learned that he also embraced, uh, came to embrace this kind of, uh, the importance of the populist and artisan movements of earlier European and American history from the 18th century and the 19th century, um, whether it's the Luddites or the, and who the Luddites represented, right, the artisanal workers that they represented, and the populists in the American experience who were also linked to the cooperative business movement. My little boy, right here, um, munching on a on a cracker, right, Kev? Um, and so we have in America, we do have in, in the cultural of American mainstream corporate branding, we already do have the do-it-yourself movement, the DIY subculture. Um, so now, uh, these also then can also be linked to spiritual and religious values, um, discernment and care, right? So uh, we've got, um, now Gandhi was classic with not only the, the spinning cotton, but also his campaign to produce salt uh, domestically in India, again, to revive it, to revive that industry. Uh, in modern India, as a good example, um, we've got Vandana Shiva as an activist who's helping organize the farmers there uh, in their maintenance of native seed stocks and protection of their native biodiversity. So um, these are some, we're sort of touching on some of, the, um, some of the basic issues that are involved as we're going to look at now the Native American civil rights in a full context, uh, understanding America as a global superpower that unfortunately is, is being driven by an unsustainable corporate business model, uh, scientifically, uh, according to the scientific reports of the climate change and ecosystem assessments. All right, so uh, I'm going to put a pause here and get ready for the next segment. See you in a moment.